Pull-free MMS, Twilio function supports Node V12, and Account Insights goes GA. All of that and more on this month's Twilio changelog. Twilio Changelog is your developer news show that keeps you up to date on all the new things that are happening in the Twilio developer ecosystem. All of the news stories can be found either on twilio.com slash changelog or on the Twilio blog. All links that we discuss in this video can be found down in the description below this video. This month's Changelog is extra special because I sat down with fellow Twilion Corey Weathers over on Twitch. You may have seen Corey at twitch.tv slash CLW or during our Signal TV broadcasts. He's a lot of fun. We recorded these segments live over at twitch.tv slash Twilio, so if you'd like to see more of that when we do it in the future, go give us a follow over there. Let's get to the news. We are excited to announce the general availability of Account Insights for all customers in the Twilio console. Account Insights make it really easy for you to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize your Twilio usage. All Twilio users are able to view usage and message data. For data and enterprise edition customers, the GA launch enables customized multi-dimensional filters, including sub-account filtering and saving reports. Me and Corey toured the new Account Insights features on stream, and it's really impressive how easy it is to navigate through your usage and message data in the console. We were even able to find out how much money Corey's account was being charged in carrier fees. Mm -hmm. See what I tell you, carrier fees. See, I'm a genius. But look at how fast that was actually. That <laughs> yeah, was actually really, super really fast. easy to see where that came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that way you know, like, wait a minute, we're spending way too much money across different carriers. Programmable SMS spend. So here's by product. Oh, snaps. And you can see the SID for the specific message that triggered this. What happens if I click on this? Holy smokes. You can actually see the whole thing. To learn more about Account Insights, head to the link in the description below to find out more about this feature. The Twilio Functions team is committed to keeping up with industry standards. According to the OpenJS Foundation's support schedule, Node V10 will no longer be supported after April 30th, 2021, so we're making sure Node V12 is available for your runtime. A new deployment will be required to make Functions run against the new Node version. If you deploy functions after April 30th, they will be automatically deployed to Node version 12. We recommend that you upgrade to Node v12 even if you're not planning on making other changes. To opt into Node v12 for your functions, you can explicitly set the Node version via either the UI dropdown in the Dependencies tab, pass in the runtime version using the serverless toolkit, or explicitly set the runtime parameter when creating a build. Corey, what are your thoughts on this new change? I loved the mention earlier about how easy it is to one, know which version of node you're running within functions. It's just a drop down box, super easy to see the current version that's being used. And then two, uh, to be able to change that version, just as you select the right version within the drop down box, really easy to test, super simple to get started, super fast to deploy the changes and just verify that your code's working the way that it expects to. So I'm, I'm a big fan. I love this change. I've got node V12 running on my local machine and even some of the uh, tool change that I have to write node code is still not up to date for, for node V12. So shout out to the team for being on latest and greatest. I think that's amazing. You can find out more about this upgrade in the Twilio docs link down in the description below this video. Over the next few weeks, we are gradually rolling out MMS capabilities across our US toll-free numbers. Some numbers have support already, and by the end of March, all toll-free numbers will support MMS. This feature is really cool. I chatted with Corey about this feature. Here's some of what he had to say. For our North American-based folks, specifically yep. the United States and Canada, yep. this is gonna be really interesting. In the, yeah, let in me the pull type, that back over. You've got local and toll Just free right there. Yup. And then I'm going to check this box for MMS. And oh, I'm going to search. Right. <gasps> oh, hey, look. We sure do. This is We live. sure do. So toll free number is a little more expensive. And I think the, the to receive on a local number is one cent per. On a toll free number, it's two cents per. Oh, wow. So yeah, a little more expensive. Definitely a little more expensive. Oh, was, okay. So this is funny. So I can't. Buy, I was trying to buy a number. I'm trial like, why number. can't I buy a number? <laughs> My account is still a trial account. I need to upgrade this account. Yeah. Clearly, that tells you how cheap I am. <laughs> <laughs> Corey. 
To find a toll-free number, use the advanced search option when searching for a number and select toll-free. You can even specify that you want only toll-free numbers that already have the MMS feature enabled. If you already own toll-free numbers, they will support MMS by the end of the month. Pricing details for toll-free MMS can be found on the SMS pricing page, linked in the description below the video. HTTP callbacks accessed via webhooks for inbound WhatsApp messages now include some new parameters. A profile name parameter returns the WhatsApp sender's profile name. The WA ID or WAID is the WhatsApp ID of the contact sending the incoming message. And the forwarded and frequently forwarded parameters will let you know if a message has been forwarded once or many times. Corey built a quick application on stream to show off the new parameters in action. The whole app took probably about five minutes to build, but the new parameters open up a lot of new options for developers for keeping track of who is sending what messages within an application. After he was done with the build, I asked Corey what he thought of the new changes. Yeah, so what, what I actually loved about this is it does make it incredibly easy to make a WhatsApp message more personal um, identify whether or not it's in a real message or it could be verified. I mean, some ridiculous spam. And at the same time, it makes it super easy to continue to work with knowing like you use the same messaging libraries, um, you know, and love and make it very easy for you to grab those attributes to have fun with. I, we built this app in literally five minutes. It took us no time. I could see how people would have a ton more fun if they had more than five minutes. To learn more about these changes, head to the docs link in the description below. The Flex plugin CLI has been updated to automate one of the most common operations, enabling or disabling a plugin. Developers can now provide the disable plugin and enable plugin arguments in the release and create configuration commands. As a bonus, Flex plugins no longer need to start with a plugin prefix. This is such a cool feature since this is a common operation. What do you think, Corey? How big of a change will this be for folks who are doing Flex development? For developers who are writing code locally, for people who need to manage or contribute to their DevOps chains, like this is gonna be actually a game changer because the ability to enable and disable plugins as a part of that process has to be easy fast, configurable. This looks like this takes care of this for folks. I'm actually a big fan of this. It just makes it super simple. It almost sort of hides the magic. So I like to call this automagically. I think that's the right word for it. You can learn about this and other things about Twilio Flex in the Twilio docs. We have a link for you down in the description below this video. It was a ton of fun to get together with Corey to discuss this month's changelog. If you enjoyed having this additional content in this episode, let us know down in the comments. You can catch Corey over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash CLW or on the Twilio channel at twitch.tv slash Twilio. If you're looking for something else to watch right now, check out this tutorial from Nathaniel about how to transcribe live phone calls. I'll see you next time.